Hello and welcome to another video from Natasha Lee and this week I'm bringing you what's doing the rounds at the moment which is neon smoke or rainbow smoke nails. I love the look of these, I am using gel polishes and pigments to achieve this look, stay tuned to find out how. Hello and welcome to another video from Natasha Lee and this week I'm doing something that's already like done the rounds once a few years ago and at the moment in the pro world it is doing the rounds again and that is smoke nails. So you might have seen it, Neon Smoke Nails. A few different YouTubers have done it. I remember originally seeing Simply Nailogical do this but with nail polish so today I'm going to show you how to do it with gel polish. This is such an easy fun tutorial to do that I have been dying to do this one and get my teeth into it. So let's get straight on with it. And here is my filmy finger. And not just my filmy finger, but my entire hands are really suffering at the moment. One, it's the cold. It is so cold, even wearing gloves and moisturizing repeatedly during the day. I am struggling. I think it's part of my skin tone. As gingers, you know, we suffer with the dry skin, to be honest with you. And also, my eldest has just got his own place. So I have been moving him into there, literally moving, cleaning, scrubbing, sorting and then redecorated his old room for my youngest. So these are battered hands, but I did it all without breaking a nail. However, I have some weird like marking either side of the nail, I don't know what it is. They, I'll rebalance them next week and then they'll be fine. Okay, so we're gonna begin with isopropyl alcohol. And I love my plastic back pads. I always have, I've used them since I was a tech and then an educator and a salon owner. I think in the States it tends to get called rubbing alcohol. And we're giving that a good cleanse. Do that to all of your nails. I don't think I've done a tutorial this way before. Not like one that doesn't involve Rick. I think this is my first tutorial, like nail art tutorial with my face in. That sounds wrong. Okay, and today I am going to be using Magpie. So I'm going to be using the Magpie base coat and we're going to apply a nice thin layer of that base coat. So when you're happy that you've fully base coated, we're going to pop that in the lamp and cure. Whilst that is curing, I'm going to get my colour and I'm using Black Betty. Try and get it nice and close up to that cuticle area. Which is easier said than done with a new camera setup that I haven't practised first. So I've got a bit much on the brush there, so I'm going to take some off and get back up close to that cuticle area. It helps to have done your cuticles recently. I haven't done mine for about a week. So that isn't going to help me getting it nice and neat around the cuticle area. Don't worry if you get any on the skin, we can work through that in just a moment. And don't forget to cap those ends, but if you do, just sweep back over the top gently. If you do make any mistakes, just get your cleanup brush dipped in. I can use actually for this. Okay, normally if I was using nail polish, I'd say you have to use nail polish remover or acetone, but because we're using gel polish, you can get away with just isopropyl alcohol to tidy up. When you're happy, we're going to pop that in the lamp and cure. So while that's curing and I'm bored, eldest has moved out, gorgeous little flat I've set him up in. George, the youngest, has moved into his old room. He's set it all up, but there's a boiler in there. And obviously all the boys are autistic and sound and sensitivity to sound can be a thing, so, at the moment, we're not getting any sleep because with the boiler in the room, every time it comes on and off, it makes a noise. At which point, George wakes up hysterically screaming. Two very boring minutes later. So let's get that second layer of colour on. See, Alex, just jiggle it. Yeah, yeah, jiggle it a bit. Up to the cuticle and then pull down. There's a bit much on that brush. And when you're happy with your second layer, I can't see you with these glasses on because I'm long-sighted and so I need them for reading, you're too far away. Anyway, when you're happy with your second layer, I'm going to pop that in the lamp and cure. Now this is where it gets a bit crazy because next I'm going to top coat. That is because we're going to be using pigments and we don't want them to stick to the black. And for that I'm going to be using Let It Shine. Try and do this in a nice thin layer because we're going to be applying a lot of layers of colour and top coat. So we don't want these nails to come out too thick and clumpy. You want, once you've applied, go back in again and remove some of that excess off. And then again, we're going to cure. And once that's cured, I'm taking a plastic back pad dipped in isopropyl alcohol and we're thoroughly, thoroughly removing that sticky layer. And now the fun starts. So I'm just getting a little tea light holder. I tend to use this to put my 
poly gel slip liquid in when I'm doing my rebalance. So I've just put alcohol or rubbing alcohol in this little pot here. I'm getting a plastic back pad and all we're going to do is add some white, which is plain Jane from Magpie. And I'm just adding a bit of that onto a mat. And then I'm taking my striping brush from Dixie Girl and links to all the products are in the description down below. And I'm going to zoom back in for this bit so you can see exactly what I'm doing close up. And all we're doing is we're going to just do a sort of line. Do you know what's happened? Oh no. Oh no. I've left gel polish on it. I left it in front of the lamp when I put it on. Rookie error, Tash. Rookie error. It's fine, I can save that later. This nail as well, we'll just do it a bit different. You really do not need much. I'm gonna just try and soften this brush up a little bit. If you do make the same mistake as me and leave like gel polish in a brush and then leave it in front of your lamp, like obviously a trained professional educator would totally do, get some acetone on a pad and just keep wiping through that brush and then check it and see how it's going. There you go, that was all it took. I have now released the brush. So now I'm going back onto this nail and what I'm going to do with this not stiff brush now is I'm gonna feather this a little bit. Don't worry about it looking a mess, it's totally fine. I'm going to do the same to the other one. Just feather it a little bit. Now I'm going to clean off the brush. And if you're wondering what that funny noise is, it's my um, isopropyl alcohol pump that's on top of my bottle. Now I'm just taking some alcohol on that brush and we're just going to start by sort of adding the alcohol through. You don't want to use too much because you're going to have to wait for this to evaporate. I'm just going to apply a bit there, then on this side too, and I'm just spreading it around a little bit. What works really well is swirling it around a little bit because smoke does tend to swirl and twirl. And you can keep going back. You can see as the isopropyl alcohol or the rubbing alcohol starts to evaporate, it almost stiffens up a bit on the gel polish again. That's fine. You can just add a little bit more of the isopropyl alcohol to your brush and go back in. You don't want to cover all of the black area because that's what gives a really amazing definition between the neon colours and the black. I like to try and get, if you can, some like areas that are darker in the middle of the smoke. I think we're almost done for those. And you can see even if it looks really pants when you first start, if you just keep fiddling, it suddenly sort of starts to come to life. If it looks rubbish, you haven't played with it enough. That sounds so dodgy. So I'm kind of liking that. In fact, I think possibly I might have put a bit too much on the ring finger. So I'm just taking a clean brush, dipping it in the isopropyl alcohol to clean it up a bit so it's slightly damp, and then just going onto that nail. And I'm just going to pull some of it off where I want to. I might just go there a little bit as well because we can soften these edges in a moment, so do not worry about that. But I just kind of want to reclaim some of that black. And maybe just tidy that up a bit there. And just try to make sure that you don't have any around the cuticle area, because that will lead to the nightmare problem of trying to remove neon pigments from your cuticle area, which seriously sucks. Especially if, like me, you've got dry cuticles at the moment. And now the key here is to wait. I have made the mistake already when I was doing the thumb that I put it in the lamp too quickly and not all the alcohol had evaporated. We want that alcohol to be fully, fully evaporated. And you can sort of tell by when you sort of look at it, it doesn't look as shiny because you fiddled about with the gel polish so much. It looks a little bit more dull. I think we're almost there on this one. But you want that fully, fully evaporated before you put it in the lamp to cure. Otherwise it doesn't properly cure. It goes sticky and tacky and not sticky in the sense of tacky layer after you've cured gel polish, like wet polish, tacky and sticky. One minute, 37 seconds later. And now I'm just going to cure again. And I'm going to be using all of my Magpie Neon pigments now. And I'm going to start with the pink, then the coral, then the orange, then the yellow, then the green, the blue, and the purple. And for this, I'm using my, this is an Uber Chic brush, this one, to remove the lid. And that is all we are using is the lid. And we are just patting 
that pigment onto that nail. I'm just going to do it like a graduated effect. So we'll do the pink first. And you can see I'm literally just patting it on. Nothing special or fancy. Patting it right in to get good coverage. Give a good rub. And then we're going in with a coral again. And again, all we need is the lid. Load up your brush. Just meet up with that pink with the coral. Then we're going in with orange. Then it's yellow. Then green. Then blue. And finally, purple. I'm just going to brush that purple there. Now I'm just going to get a fan brush and I am going to thoroughly brush over those nails. And if you want to tidy up the design once you've done that, just go in with your clean brush and a little bit of alcohol on it and freshen up those black areas. And then it's time to top coat. Now don't be too stingy with this top coat because you don't want to drag the pigments over the nail and leave brush marks in them. But you will need to apply two coats of top coat to complete this design because when you use anything like pigments or anything like that, then I highly recommend two layers to stop chipping and peeling, which can happen when you use pigments and glitters. And now just pop that into cure. So we've applied the first layer of top coat. I'm going to apply the second layer of top coat. In between, I have had to dash out and get the kids. I'm just going to go in with that second layer of top coat. And the reason that we need the second layer of top coat is, as I said before, you have a tendency for the edges and around the cuticle areas to chip and lift when you have pigments and things like that on the nails. And I'm just applying that second layer to all of the nails. And once you've applied top coat to all the nails, it's time to cure. And then using a plastic back pad soaked with isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol, which is basically just 99% alcohol, I'm just going to remove that sticky inhibition layer. Make sure you've got rid of all the sticky bits because that can make the nails look dull when they're finished. And then it's time to go in with your favorite cuticle oil. And this is a Simply Pure, and links to all these are in the description again. And here are the finished nails. Can you see I like these so much? These are so much fun. I liked them in the polish, but there's something just about the added vibrancy and I think the extra control you get with blending the pigments together that gives you a control you can't really get quite the same when you're using just polishes. However, if you do want to know how to do this video using just nail polish, then I'll put a link in the top right corner now because Simply Nailogical did this one a few years ago, I think. So I'll link to her video in the top right corner. But let's give you a few more gratuitous shots, shall we? So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video yet again. It's been a while. I feel like it's been a while since I've done an actual proper nail art tutorial because I've been covering so many other bits and pieces and wanting to bring you the basics, hints and tips as well for absolute beginners and also for people who might be struggling a bit but it's hard to admit it because when you're qualified people expect you to know everything and everyone has to learn and start somewhere. So thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it then please hit the subscribe button down below and next week you'll see a little tiny, teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny bell icon. If you want to hit that one it will notify you eventually every time I upload. And if you want to become a channel VIP you'll be able to get behind the scenes access polls, posts that other people don't see, then head to natashalee.vip and you can sign up there and there's a whole range of different tiers where you get different access and different benefits and different rewards. So if that's something you fancy, go and take a look. If it's not, skip over it. Just forget it ever existed. If there's anything nail related you'd really love to see or even nail product related that you'd really love to see, please leave me comments down in the description down below. Some of my most favorite videos that I've ever done and ever enjoyed have been coming from suggestions from you guys, which I absolutely love because 
that's why the channel's here. In the meantime, thank you everyone, love you loads, and I'll see you very, very soon.